Hey everyone, this is Pivotal Defense, Jenna Clayton. We're here with Matt from Meet the Pressers. We're here at Train and Learn 2023. And um, we were we did uh, Force on Force with Matt yesterday. By the way, it was so awesome. And I shot you right in the chest. <laughs> I'm really proud of myself for that. <laughs> with a blank. Real quickly though, too, actually. <laughs> He's alive, obviously. Um, but um, we're, we want to sit here and talk with Matt about more of what he does and the, the, even the class that we did recently yesterday. So what, what is it exactly you do that? Matt? Uh, I know you got, you got a wide background. Yes, so, right. predominantly I like to say I'm a self-preservation instructor and I teach about 90 courses, or at least I can teach about 90 courses uh, about 300 times a year all over the country. Uh, around the country, it's typically uh, instructor level courses with five major companies, so UTM, uh, Sabre, Taser, uh, USCCA, and NRA. So those five national organizations, I'm either a senior training counselor, training counselor, or a master instructor. Uh, and with uh, Sabre, Taser, and UTM, I'm a, a master instructor, both civilian and law enforcement. Okay, cool. So you gotta eat. Yeah, with the Force on Force stuff yesterday, I want to touch on that. Because neither one of us have done any force on force training. We've done a lot of pistol training, rifle training, things of that nature. Mm -hmm. um, so your force on force to me yesterday was fantastic. Appreciate it. It got me in the mind. It really changed my mindset. I just told the guys from Tactical Response who do force on force training classes, a two-day class. Yeah. Um, but it really got me in the mindset. I was like, oh, shit, I need to get into force on force class. Because you don't know what you don't know. Totally. And you, you could take all the pistol classes in the world, all the rifle classes, but if you don't do force on force, where are you, where are you testing yourself? Yeah. Yeah. Um, that really, you drove that home yesterday for me. So thank you for that. Oh, I appreciate that. And there's a whole bunch of little nuggets that you dropped in that really got me thinking of things. So it was great. Um, <clears throat> obviously, uh, I'm looking forward to more training with you, hopefully down down the road. We should definitely make something happen. Uh, we were talking the other day about coming up to Minnesota and doing some things. And yep. um, you were talking about, <laughs> so the difference of um, yesterday with tasers and pepper sprays. I want to touch on that a little bit. Okay. Because you said... People are talking tasers, and they're thinking stun guns. Yep. You want to kind of explain the, that behind so people have, have totally. a little bit of understanding? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So <clears throat> I, I like to say, like, who here has been tased? Kind of like I did you yeah. know, yesterday with you guys. And a lot of people's hands go up. But then when you drill down into it, a lot of the people, at least you know, maybe not instructors, but definitely end users, you know, when they've been hit with a, a stun gun. So mm -hmm. that's even disingenuous or incorrect because when you think stun gun, you think gun. Mm -hmm. But it's actually uh, usually a flashlight or old school. It kind of looks like a you know Kevorkian taser kind of yeah. thing. Right? <laughs> um, so when we when you hear people say taser, uh, it's a brand name. So yeah. Kleenex, uh, you know Band Aid, Kool Aid, they're all brand names. So with that, we need to drill down to kind of find, especially as instructors, to find out what do they mean. Because a lot of times they'll they don't know what they mean. They're just saying a common term such as Taser, which is the company that invented the product in the first place. But now there's a lot of spin-offs and, and offshoots from it. So the the two categories to put that stuff in is a is an ED. So ED being no, not what you're thinking. Different type of ED. Okay, I came up with that joke yesterday morning. Uh, anyway, wait. No, anyway. Um, <laughs> The cameraman's trying very hard not to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, energy devices is what it means. So, energy devices, and under that, that caveat, you're going to have pain compliance devices, which would be the, the typical stun gun people think of, right? Flashlight thing with a shocky shocky in the end. And then NMI, neuromuscular incapacitation. So, if you see somebody, two probes fly through the air, electricity goes through those wires, they lock up and lose all control of bowels and such. Uh, that is NMI. So NMI locks up the body, and then pain compliance is usually that jerk move away, kind of yeah. how that hurts. Mindset. I'm going to make distance type of deal. Exactly. Yeah. And, and even in that, like if nobody's been you know, touched with it, like you ever take a 9-volt battery and, and you touch your tongue, you're like, ah, you try it. And they're like, I ain't trying that. <laughs> yeah. But when you do it, you're like, ah, ain't that bad. So you get hit with a, a stun gun, you get hit with a, the pain compliance device, most people are going to be like, uh, oh, okay, yeah, it's, uh, it's, <laughs> Most people are going to be like, you know, it's uh, it's not that bad once they've had it done. Like the knife, the shock knife. Yep, yep. Yeah. You get hit with the shock knife, you're like, okay, it wasn't as bad as I thought. Just like anything in life, right? Once you've done it enough, you're kind of you're a little bit more prone to it, like getting punched in the face, right? Like talk about. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I'm not suggesting anybody just go getting punched in the face to feel what it, or get shot. Those are probably things that yeah. You don't want to do more than once. Right. Well, definitely shot. Yeah. yeah. 
So I'm curious mm -hmm. because, you know, most people think of taser, taser, yep. like taser yep. of what they are because law enforcement, taser, taser, taser. Mm -hmm. So you, you train law enforcement, yes. correct? Correct. So why is that they only use that, those terms? So, I mean, in law enforcement, like we'll, te we'll teach taser, taser, taser to alert law enforcement officers in the area, partners and right. such, cover officer to not be putting hands on suspect when taser's being deployed. Because obviously you don't want to be caught up in that, in that uh, electrifying experience. So that being said, we, you can do the same as a civilian, but as a civilian, you don't necessarily need to because you usually don't have a partner or cover officer or something. So the you know the term taser, because they invented the device, is just kind of goes along with it. Like right now, if I said, hey, you got a Band-Aid? Don't, you don't need to give me a brand, a Band-Aid brand Band-Aid. Band right. Yeah. You just yeah. give me a Band-Aid. Yeah. Right? Can I have, do you have a Kleenex? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, right. it's just... It's just so long over time. It's set over time, like yes. Kool-Aid. Okay, if I give you a you know a drink that's you know flavored and colored, who cares? Or pop, or Coke, or Pepsi. They're all they're all Same terms time. that are in the in the industry, right? Yeah, makes sense. So, so the sense. question I get asked quite a bit, I do with permit to carry classes mainly in those clubs, mm -hmm. I get asked, what can can are civilians allowed to have tasers? So, yes and no. Depends on jurisdiction. Okay. Uh, there's. 49, if I'm not mistaken, 49 states, maybe 48, that it's le fully legal in some states. You have to have a pistol license or a firearms license okay. or a FOID card, blah, blah, blah. So you got to check with the local jurisdictions to see what you're allowed to have and as well as uh, your state laws. Uh, so it's something that can be found on USCCA's website? Um, I'm not sure about USCCA's, but definitely on Taser's website. Ta okay. Taser would have that. Uh, pepper spray, on the other hand, or OC, all there is in capsicum, uh, that is legal in, in all states. Okay. However... Uh, each state, like New York State, you can't have more than 0.75 ounces. It can't be camouflage, which means it can't be disguised. It can't be like a lipstick. It looks like lipstick or, or a pen. pen. It's got to be. Exactly. It's got to yeah. look like pepper spray. Right? Okay. Or oily resin capsicum. Got you. Cool. So what, um, besides like force on force, what kind of classes do you, can you offer the public? Uh, in New York, I do the 18-hour. I was the first instructor in the state to offer the 18-hour. I handed the first certificate to the first New York City resident. They drove up from New York City to take that class for me. I'm uh, not proud that I have to offer the course because of yeah. Bruin decision and the New York State CCA law, um, but I am proud that I was able to put something together for the general public and at least get them through the process of you know, being in compliance with the law. Right. Uh, so that's what I'm doing a lot of. I teach that week. So 18-hour 18, 18 wow. course every every week. So two days out of the week, I'm teaching that course. That's nice. uh, and predominantly, it's in the central New York area. Uh, but I do, you know, I, I say self-preservation self instructor. So boater ed, driver ed, hunter ed, you know, first aid survival. You know, I've done survival classes, how to, you know, build a fire in the woods, how to build a shelter, how to make water out of snow and, you know, all that. And that's, kind of all that is absolutely important. Yes. Yeah. 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 And we have a homestead, 23 acres in upstate. So we've got chickens and bees. We're going to add goats. We have a garden with a one-acre pumpkin patch, a stock pond with fish. Uh, yeah. So we try to be as self-sufficient as we can. You know, we've got a, That's a, awesome. Yeah. A well water so it's not you know hooked into the city nice. so we don't have the floor. That's good. I love that. Yeah. Try as best we can. You know? Yeah. Oh. The crap hits the fan and the zombies start coming. Exactly. Exactly. Don't come to me. Don't come to you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll teach you how to prepare Where? yourself. <laughs> Do you, you have an address? Yeah. yeah. Can, can we get your numbers out of there? <laughs> no. New York City. Uh, what's uh, uh, Kam <laughs> Kamala's house address again? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so. Uh, Too much. I know we kind of all over, the place, all over the place here, you know, but um, we've talked about force and force, de escalation, less than lethal. Yes. Right. That's what we all instruct is we, we, we don't want to go to our gun. That's last resort, right? Right. Um, it's more likely that you not need a gun. Exactly. In all in exactly. Um, Most of the So, um, obviously, with your background, you, force on force is very important for people to take. What would you would you suggest people to take force on force training? Like, let's say they take like a two day, like, let's go Katie's class. Mm -hmm. Let's take his pistol class, and then, like, what's the process? or timeline if you take a force and force you think um i mean it's going to be different for everybody i would say like as, to be an instructor on the utm force on force side yeah you have to be nra uscca instructor or a state or federal firearms instructor in some mm -hmm. sense so that's like your entry point for that for an end user it's going to be based on the instructor what they feel like that if that end user is ready for it right okay. so if somebody comes to a class and they're like uh you know hey uh you know they come in and their their guns in a holster and the holsters upside down the trigger guards exposed yeah probably, not probably need to send that person home yeah right yeah like uh well okay uh, so i guess it's individually how it's going to be but i would say that 
don't say to yourself, okay, I just got my gun and uh, I'm going to shoot for five years and be really good and get into competition, then I'm going to do force on force. Right. Because bad guys are practicing daily. Right? Right, and right. keep in mind that the force on force, we did pat downs, yep. took away was just all touch the weapons. That. So we are making it a safe environment because we're going to be pointing real guns at each other. Yes. Even though they've been converted, the you know the rule of thumb is don't point a gun at somebody you're not willing to destroy, right? Yes. Well, I don't want to destroy somebody. But in some cases, you might have to point a gun at a human that's trying to destroy you. Right. Well, and that's what that is, a controlled environment, safe environment. Right. So yesterday I did the dueling mm -hmm. with one other guy, and that... The honest, it was puckery in it food. Was, <laughs> yeah, and I mean, I don't know if it was my my amount of training, my mindset, all kind of came into play. Yep. You but dropped I, down, didn't you? I dropped. That's, <laughs> that's how I normally shoot, though. <laughs> yes. I normally I normally get low when I shoot. Yeah, because you're so tall. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I get a better center center of gravity. Yeah. He's a big man, folks. So, to me, I knew what was happening. I knew what we were doing. Mm -hmm. I'm not. I'll be honest with you. It's it got to me for a second. I hesitated for a split second. I know I did. Yeah. And so you never pointed a gun at another human being. No. Not not in a force of force situation or not right. even anything. You and, know? And, and that right there was like, uh, and they give you a pause. Like yeah, I paused second. real briefly. Yeah. Like, oh shit, you got it, you know. But I still reacted. There's things I, I know that I could have done differently. Now my question to you is, you were talking about. Now we did that with blanks. Let's yep. make that clear first of all. We weren't using U cham rounds with blanks. Um, as instructors, is how can we without? I mean, is there things we can do to kind of simulate what you said, kind of get people past that without the U T M rounds? Like airsoft, or yeah. can we use blanks airsoft, or paint, paintball guns, um, you know, anything like that. Uh, even lasers. In some classes, if I have really big classes, I'll use the uh, CERT laser guns. Sure. So CERT's a sponsor of mine, so I'll use the next level training mm -hmm. uh, CERTs, and you know, and that can be effective too. Is there rules for like using blanks at all? No, I mean we did that with the duels, and okay. we did that partially. We did that is because I didn't, I didn't want to have to bring five suitcases of helmets and clothing, and gotcha. and, and require everybody to have two layers of loose fitting clothing and gloves because people forget things or don't know they bring the wrong thing. UTM's hurt. They, yeah, they, they do. I just got shot. <laughs> I just got shot here, so I got a welt right here. It's, it's bumped up actually. Just notice. So so as, as far as us, since we're instructors, we could we could put blanks. Obviously, mm -hmm. follow protocols. Yeah. I've got a select few people that I know that I, I would trust to do this with to start out with the test, do a test run. Yeah. We can put blanks in the gun and try that out. As yeah, a totally. And, and, the, and the nice thing with the blanks, the only thing you need is eye protection. Yeah. So no hearing protection, nothing. You can point it in any direction. I mean, obviously, try to you have it as cleared as possible. You have protocols still, make sure nobody has weapons well, on them, yeah, any, yeah. any kind of weapons, right? Other than a flashlight would probably be the only thing. Okay. And then, um, you know, make sure the guns have been checked, too, to make sure the guns are converted and no live ammo in the area. That was my question. Do we? So I carry Glock 19 every single mm -hmm. day. Do I have to convert my pistol over to shoot blanks? So the the nice thing with the 19 or the 17, uh, that's probably the most sold uh, conversion kit that UTM offers is the Glock okay. 17 19. So you're at I think it's 450 to 500 dollars for the kit, which mm -hmm. includes the barrel, the spring, and uh, the slide. Okay. So if you want to shoot MMR, so projectiles, that's one barrel, and about 240 bucks is another barrel, which would be the blank barrel. Okay. So you could do a blank conversion kit for about 450 to 500 dollars, and that would convert your Glock into be able to shoot blanks. Okay. Cool. And then it'll only be good for that. Only good for that, and then if you wanted to also, like I did over here, I swapped the barrels out. So you swap the barrel out and put the MMR barrel in, and then now it shoots the okay. the wax projectile. Yeah. Cool. That's yep. Cool. Well, man, I appreciate I appreciate yesterday's class. I enjoyed it thoroughly. I've told you several times, and it, it really changed my mindset. I don't know what awesome. yours. No, I loved it. And it, it, look for the video. You just love shooting. Look for the video. She she got him, and I mean, it was great. <laughs> he's like, did you shoot me? Yeah, he's like, yeah, I didn't feel it. <laughs> it was all protected. Um, in the area. But yeah, I appreciate you coming. I appreciate yeah. the, the class appreciate history, you. and uh, definitely talking to you. Thank you for your time. Bye.